Laura Lee McKellips, and I am normally in my day job a park ranger for Shiloh National Military Park. I've been publishing books since 2013. Can you talk louder? A little bit louder. I okay. forgot my hearing aids. It's okay. I can talk louder. <laughs> All right. I'm going to be in here. No, it's fine. I've been publishing since 2013 as a self-publishing. Um, number one rule, finish the book. That's all I can say. Finish your book. Because you can't publish if you don't finish your book. Um, you may hate it. You may love it. I've actually never hated one of my books, but I do know a lot of authors who do. Um, that's what the editing process is for. So, so finish your book and I will bring up Amazon. So this is the Amazon Direct publishing page. This is how, of course I've already logged in. This is what you will need to start your book. And we'll scroll down. And you can kind of see the live books on there. They do have hardbacks now. Are you cool. going to have this as a handout? I don't have any handouts. You don't have, is oh. there any way of being able to paper. read this? I can't see. Oh, you can't see it? Um, I don't have anything printed or anything. Depends on the lights off, maybe, right? Um, if the lights were off, could you see it? Maybe if I move up real close. Shouldn't sit in front of that, right? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Francis can move it though if she needs to. Okay. <laughs> close. Wait a minute. I'm basic page. This is the bookshelf. Um, as you can see, this book is live. Um, it's called Mermaid Voice. What does live mean? means it's active on there. Like people can purchase the book. Okay. So for live. Um, and I have it in Kindle, paperback, and hardcover. Hardcover took a little bit of work, but they're all on there. Um, now I'm going to go through setting it up a little bit later. First off, to get it ready for this though, Everybody knows at least what a word processor is. I use Microsoft Word, um, and as you can see, it looks like a book right now. Prior to this, when you type it up, I didn't want to cause any problems. If I'm in your way, say so. I'm going to have to sit real close. That's fine. To you. Okay. I'll change this to you. So this is normally what you see when you write a book. You just have it regular, top up, okay, indent. When you get ready to publish, um, you're going to have to lay it out as a book. What you need to start with is what size you want to do. Uh, mine are currently, those are the ones up there, they're six by nine, okay? That is just the size that is a trade publishing. It's not the little bitty ones that you're used to from like Harlequin or Pride and Prejudice, any of your traditional publishers because this is a self-published size. So it's six by nine. To go into that, you get very, very familiar. You can also hire people to do this for you. I take the cheap route, always. So you'll need to go into the margins, custom, and I always have to remind myself when I publish a new book on how this goes and set it up. So this one shows like a regular paper. 
when I go into the one that I've actually set up for publishing, which I call paperback. looks different. We got gutters, you have mirror margins, um, and this is just your preference. I googled this when I was doing my first book. This is what they had, so this is what I've used ever since. Amazon really likes this. Um, also, if you don't remember this, Amazon does have a self-help page on their self-publishing, on what you need for gutters, what like the inside box. What are gutters? Um, the gutter is grab one of these. The gutter is what? So when you open a book, <coughs> the gutter is just this inside. That's what a gutter is. There's nothing on the print there. That's why you want it. So what's the difference between inside and gutter? So inside, it depends on the page. So this page, this is the gutter, and that would be technically inside. This is how it works. But that's how. So just publish the titles. I just know that's the gutter. It's like if you've ever done the cover, it's your um, leads. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later. I don't do my own covers. That is one thing. But I do my own formatting. Um, page numbers, stuff at the top. That do get a little difficult, and I'll go into that. But And you can change these numbers. If you want it to look smaller on the inside, make the margins wider top to bottom, inside and the gutter. Just whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, you want to mirror the margins because it is a book, so you want it to look the same on both sides. And then it applies to the whole book. For paper, that's where you'll change it to the six by nine. Six by nine is what this book is. And <coughs> the layout, you want different odd and even pages and a different first page. The reason is that it helps those page numbers at the top. Page numbers still give me issues and I've published 13 books. I hate the page numbers. Hate the page numbers. Every every time I'm telling you 13 books and they still give me problems. Why? Um, okay, so why do you hate the page numbers? Um because part of it's this, part of it is word, um, just being but because you want no page number, no heading on your chapter title page. So that's chapter nine. So there's nothing on that page. Some people will put them at the bottom, so they'll still have a number on that page. Um, just depends on what you want to do. But I want it to look all different. Um, and the one thing is when you are writing your book, when you go to make a new page, like when I want this to be a totally new page, because the page before it, kind of ends a little bit early. There's what you want to do. You don't want to hit enter like five million times. You want to um, go to on the layout for the breaks, next page. So that starts a new section. That's what's key. That's why these page numbers, I'm telling you. And when you're typing, you forget this when you're writing your book and you have to go back and make sure it's Next page for these sections. <coughs> when I write it, I just write it straight through chapter one, chapter ten, whatever. So next page is key for those page numbers. It makes it a little easier now. Um, and like I said, even in odd pages, different. How you get the stuff at the top? If you wrote any papers in school, you know how to put a heading on there. But if not, you want to go. Layout over. Yeah. Another. Header. Mm -hmm. And this has already got it on here. I do the same one pretty much for all my books. So you can see on those two, I have the page number, the title of the book, and then my name, and then the other page number. That's just how I set it up. You can do different fonts in there. Um, my first one with Curse Soldier, I matched the font to what the chapter title was because um, I have different chapter title fonts. When you type your book, though, make sure it's in a readable font. You want Times New Roman is more for 
uh, nonfiction books. I just learned this, so don't feel bad. I just learned. I type mine in whatever that's called now. Yeah, that. Because apparently it's easier and pleasant to read and it looks less like a nonfiction book. Mm -hmm. It's not too discernible yeah. to me. I like single author. Yeah. Okay. As long as it's readable and the other reason you want to make sure when you do Kindle, when you do a Kindle book, you want it to be made to check on yours to make sure it'll transfer to the Kindle. Um, and the reason Kindle now has a program you have to use separately, and I'll show you that in a minute, um, to make this, all this information be digital. Even though you already typed it up, they want it extra digital. Uh, that's all with the layout. And then save that, I always save it separately. So my book is one thing, and as you saw, I've got, that one says book, that is the edited version, typed it all up. And then for each one, because I do it as Kindle, paperback, and hardback, they all have to be different formats. Um, and it really has to do with uh, this um, ISBN number, that's all. Because Kindle has one, the hardback will have one, and the paperback will have one. They all have their own separate because I don't purchase them, I let Amazon give them to me for free. You can purchase, that is a thing if you wanna do. I don't purchase it because I don't spend that money. Um, it's the same. It's just a way to save money while you're doing this. Um, and then make sure copyright page, it's just a generic one. You look in all books, they pretty much have this information. You wanna make sure that you, it doesn't represent anybody. Um, I do not purchase copyrights because there again, it is an expense that it really doesn't help for your book not to be pirated because I've uh, follow different authors who are very big self-published on authors who have copyright and it doesn't have any effect with them. People can still steal your book. It's out there, they can steal it. Um, but you do want to make sure you put copyright the year and your name. And then, since it's self-published, I do my cover designer. I'll show you that website. I don't pay very much for my cover designer. I'm not that technical savvy doing InDesign other than at work. So I pay somebody to do that. Um, and then I pay for my images, so that's the Shutterstock. Pretty much this is just giving credit to the people who's helped you. You wanna make sure, because they can't come back and be like, oh, that's my image, I'm gonna sue you. Yeah. What is the, uh cover usually cost you wise? Um, it just easy. depends. Mine are normally less than $20 and I tip her okay. really well. I'll show you the website I do. Um, and I've worked with her for several book covers now. And she, pretty much I tell her what type of book it is. I do clean romance. Most of the time I just tell her romance. This is in the fantasy realm. This is kind of the font I want. And then I give her the blurb. It's another technical Term, and it's just this back matter information, it's called a blur. Give her all that. Give her the page numbers, what color I'm going to have the pages, because you can choose different colors, um, white and cream. White are more of your nonfiction books. I like white, because sometimes you can read it better. Um, and then cream, I do a lot for my historical books. So that's the different stuff you can do with the inside. Um, another thing to make sure you have, I'll scroll all the way to the end. Yeah. Is the about the author page. You don't have to do it, but if you notice all those things have all about the author on the back, I don't put it on the back. I like my back matter to have about my book. Mm -hmm. So I just put it in the book. That was the hardest thing I've ever written, because you're talking about yourself. And then the acknowledgement, if you want to acknowledge anybody. You don't have to do that page. I just like doing that page, especially if I've asked a lot of questions from certain people, if I've gotten a lot of help for certain things in the acknowledgement page. And that's a lot in the self-publishing industry. And then I normally include the prologue to my next book, just because it gives them something to like, okay, this book's coming out soon, or will be out 
I always put it unedited because it's not edited normally. Um, it also eats up page numbers if you have a shorter book. Because um, you can see one of my shorter ones I have. Um, you can also make the font bigger to make it. Because um, if you get really small, Amazon won't print it. It's got to have a certain number of page numbers. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what? Yeah, if you get really small. I mean, I've got plenty of pages, but like, that's silly. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's not cost effective for them to print it. So no. if you get super small, they won't print your book. Um, it's probably better as an e-book. But if you want the physical book, you want. That's why sometimes you get books like there's like three or something in there, two or three, to make it big enough to be published. Just being cost effective. It's just an Amazon thing. Yeah. Um, and I told you you had to have it edited. And I've told the ones who come like every month, Grammarly is what I use. Besides the regular spell checker, it has a free version. Um, but if you do the paid version, it will detect your tone. Um, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know about that. So it detects your tone. So if you want it to be assertive, if you want your character to be assertive, it'll say if it's assertive enough. Or if you want your character to be more anxious. And then it can tell you, be like, well, it sounds better this way if you want to convey this certain thing. Also tells you plagiarism. I use it for school for plagiarism. You know, you don't want to plagiarize anybody's work. Um, that's what this opens. And this is just what Grammarly looks like. I have it added in, and it will check the entire document of whatever it's doing. And I'll have. Do you remember how Wi-Fi to use to build this? I don't think it had needs internet, yeah. Um, also, it doesn't like hers. And this is set up for college. That's why it's highlighting all of this stuff. But your clarity, so another engagement, tells you if you're very engaging. You know, if it says it's boring, it will tell you if it's boring or not. <laughs> it gets a little rough. Um, and then the delivery. And this is where you can adjust your goals, because mine is set up for school right now, so it's very formal, you know. I hope that's still, it's set up for this one, but normally it's set up for school. So you can just change all that. So that's the stuff that's in Word. Google Docs has some of this stuff. I don't know all of Google Docs stuff, because I don't use it to type in. Um, I just use Word, because I'm comfortable with it. It has all my layouts and margins everywhere I need it to be, and so they come up with a new version. To relearn it. That's always fun. Um, so that's that part of it. Now, when you go through, and like I said, save it different places. Don't just save it on here. I have a um, drive, a Google Drive that I can access. I also do it to my OneDrive through my Hotmail. I have it saved different places, and I have a thumb drive. Something may crash at one point. I have it saved different places. I've gone through that problem before. Plus, I can work on it in different areas. Like if I'm at work and I want to type out a scene, like if I'm at lunch, I don't need my computer. I just get on my phone, type out a scene in the book, or if I wanted to read something, whatever. So, so like, are they all connected though? They are all connected, yep. Ooh. Yep, as long as you got your Google or your OneDrive, it's all connected. I normally don't take my thumb drive to work, but I do have Now my Google Drive, I save every chapter. As soon as I'm, even when I'm working on it, I save every chapter so that if something happens, I need a new computer, whatever. So that's what it is. Um, I told you about the blurb, the back matter. The, I just type it up separately. I save everything separately. So that's just the blurb. It can be different lengths. Mine's pretty big on this one. I have shorter ones. This is just you summarizing your own book. It is hard. It's super hard for me. It's hard for when I tell people about my book. I normally do not write this until the end. So I know exactly where my book is going. Um, some people write at the very beginning and put it up on Amazon and it's ready for you to pre-order when the book's not ready yet. Um, if you're confident on where your book's going, you can do that. Um, but if you don't know where it's going to go, you know, I wouldn't that you can always put to be uh, TBD which is to be announced but you can just tell me to, to, be, to be announced yeah you can always put that on there I've done that um, but 
that's the blurb. Or they call it back matter. Either or, they will call it both. Depends on what one says you're on. And then, so my cover artist, That is how the cover looks. It looks backwards. That's because when they lay it out, they lay it out like this. Mm -hmm. And like I said, she's really good. I sent her both of those pictures. She merged them together, sent her the back. But if you're really good at InDesign or there's other editing softwares, you can do your own. Amazon gives you a template and you can do it yourself. They're a little bit picky um, because y'all can see this center or the spine has to be certain because you have to have your page numbers. If it's too big, they're going to tell you it's too big. If it's too small, they're going to be like, no, you can't do anything with your book. Um, I have had those issues before. My very first book, Christina. That's what we kept having problems with, was my spine because it was either too big or too small. And then ended up they will tell you though thankfully when you're looking at it they're like this is exactly what you need these fall bit between these ranges um, so Amazon has gotten better over the years I will say telling you exactly what you need for it they're making it a little bit easier but that is what's probably gonna cause you the most problems because you're gonna need a bleed section and when I say bleed it's just extra when you put it on there because they have an outline of what it looks like so you need a little bit more but you don't need any words or pictures falling into that bleed because Amazon's like, hey, there's a picture not right. So. And then I just have extra. I have a Pinterest board for all kinds of pictures. Um, I'll show you. We'll go to the last one. Okay. So this, and we'll just go and go into. So if you're setting this up the first time, this is what your thing looks like. <coughs> this is the Amazon page. Of course, all of this is filled out. I've already done it. But English, unless your book is in a different language, you can't change that. I don't write in foreign languages. The book title. And if it has a subtitle, like I know some of the fantasy books and stuff have subtitles. So like, like, like Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. Fellowship oh. of the Ring is a subtitle. So you would put your subtitle in there, okay? And it's gonna be exactly how you want it to appear. So, and then if it's in a series, this one's in my fairy tale series. This is a new thing Amazon does now. You gotta go back and do all my other series. This just makes it easier when you're on the Then if it's a different edition number, say you're doing a special anniversary edition, um, you've seen those on Amazon, like 10th anniversary of books, that's where it would do it. Um, and then your name, exactly how you want it to appear. Lee is technically my middle name, but I go by Laura Lee, so I have it, Laura Lee McKellis. Um, or if you have somebody to contribute, this is like a secondary author, probably won't. You're not writing technical books. Um, these are more like textbooks who have two authors. Or if you need more. Um, that's where they'll go. And then this is that back matter that I was telling you about. If you were setting this up and you don't have it, and I will go through because I'm going to set up my new book that I'm writing right now, uh, you'll see what I write in there. Um, and then if you own the copyright, which is your book, you own the copyright, you're going to click that because you're not publishing a public domain work. Public domain is like Pride and Prejudice. Like maybe you transcribe Pride and Prejudice in a different language. That's public domain at this point. That's not what you're doing. Um, and then keywords. This is just what your keywords are, what you want them to be. Um, they could be phrases like I put clean romance in there because I do like, I write clean romance. Um, this was a Cinderella book. 
you don't have to have seven, you may have more than seven. Um, and we'll, we'll only let you do seven though. And then you can pick two categories, fiction, and then I go into romance, contemporary, and then romance in general. Um, you're to do fantasy and then whatever, and there's lots of these categories. I don't have an age range. Um, this is for little kids books. If you wanted to have an age range, so what? if your book had come that you were not one of the kids or anything, you could get that? You could. Now the issue with that is Amazon will restrict your sales. Mm -hmm. um, you can put on a warning in the Back Matter section for 17 and above. A lot of romance books have that in here. Um, just watch it if you try to change that because they will restrict your sales and they can take your book off the market if they don't feel it's that's just new in the last couple of years they've started doing that and then of course it tells me when my book was created or when it was released so I'm saving all that information always get saved always get saved so this is the second page and then I always do the digital rights I don't actually understand all of that. I just know it supposedly puts something on your book that people can't steal it. They still can steal it, but supposedly that helps in that. So I always put that in there. Um, and then this is where you would upload your manuscript after it's already gone through the program. Kindle Create. And then this is your cover. So since this is an ebook, all it needs is the front. So you wouldn't do your whole cover. Ebooks only do this. Mm -hmm. um, that's why you don't see the back on ebooks. And then launch the previewer. You can launch that. I'll show you what it looks like. This is before you've gone like published it. This is what it's gonna like. And you got a couple of different options on how you want it to look. So this would be like on a tablet. picture to look good in black and white too. So you can always attempt to like change it on your computer. And then this is the inside of your Kindle. See how that is. And then get little contents. And this just tells you That's a new thing that they've got on it. So you can see what it looks like. Or newer in the last couple of years. Scroll down. And then this is where you, if you purchased um, your ISBN number, you can stick that in there. Kindle books that don't need it, I will let Amazon assign me one. Um, and then this, if you have a publisher, which is you're self published and you want to have a publisher, this is more of the vanity publishers where you have to do everything yourself. And then the front page, just to decide how much your book is worth. Okay, this is enrolling Kindle Select, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But, going down, you have all territories, you own this book in the entire world. So you're gonna click that. Don't do individual territories. Um, your primary marketplace, since we're based in America, is Amazon.com. And then this is where you go and set up how much it's worth. To you, now check the books in whatever genre you're gonna be in, how much, um, base it off of how many pages. I do, I want the 70% royalties. That means Amazon pays me 70%, they keep 30. And to do that, I have to be in the 299 to uh, 9.99 price range. So I can have the 70, because I want to get paid more, obviously. Um, 
And romance books right around now is about $2.99 to about $6.99 <laughs> on how big they are. Um, so it tells you the rate and then how much of a royalty you get off of it. And they do, if you're in that 70%, they will charge you to deliver to somebody's device. That's what that means. And then since I chose all the territories, this is, and I didn't have to put these numbers in at all. You don't have to know the trend, you know, the conversion rate for anything. It does it for you. So that's in India, the UK, Denmark, France, Spain, Italy. I think that's New Zealand. Japan. Brazil. Canada. You no, will sell, I know. <coughs> going back to the uh, deciding how much you, yeah. Oh, yeah. The 70%, what if, what if you decide you don't want to stay in that range? So what then you'll go down to the 35%. So they will only pay you 35%. So if you sell your book for $15.99, um, because you feel it's worth $15.99, you're only going to get 30, 35% of those royalties, unfortunately. Yeah. Because if you're, and also if you charge less than $2.99, um, like I have one of my books that's um, $1.99 because it's smaller, so I charge less. Um, so they, they pay me less for that one. But that's the 35%. I mean, you'll still get more money probably than charging within that range. Um, you just have to do, work out the math. Um, best bet if you want to know my higher end is put 999. That way you'll get the 70% royalty. Because you want to get paid as much as you want for your book. So 70%. And it will be the 70% for most of the other markets. Oh, they've changed them all now. It used to be somewhere 65, somewhere 60. Some, one was even 50 at one point. So Amazon's already converted everybody to 70. So in Australia, somebody purchases your book, um, you see how much it is. Now you can change these individually because you see this one will go up to 11.99 for Australia, um, just because their conversion rates differently. You can change that uh, to be more if you want to. I don't ever touch those. It's just too much work. And then this is always locked, the lending. That just means if they um, purchase your book and they want to lend it and they're in the lending library, they can lend your book. It's always in there. You can't take that off. Um, and going back up to Kindle Select. So Kindle Select means you only release it in the Amazon storefront. That is it. Um, and it's for a set period of days, 90. I had to think about that. It is 90 days that it's in there. And what that is, is people who are in um, Kindle Unlimited, which is a separate program from Amazon or anything, Kindle Unlimited means they can read your book without purchasing it, and however many pages they read, that's what you get uh, paid on. And they gotta read a threshold. I think it's at least like 50 pages or mm -hmm. something. Um, and then you get those monthly royalties. Um, and normally it's three months later you'll get that, but you can see how many pages they read in the Kindle Select program. I have done that for my last several books because um, they're in series. All of my books that are in series, they're in Kindle Select, especially the older ones because people are still reading those and I get paid versus people purchasing them. So that's an option. Um, my first book is not in it because I still have it on other platforms and I'll show you some of those platforms and a couple of my other books are not in it because I have them on other platforms. But it is a good option if you would like, if you don't want to worry about any other program um, like Apple Books or putting it on Nook or any of those, Kindle Select's a good option. It is in Kindle. So I'll open the pictures for this one. Okay. So to prepare it for your manuscript after you've already done it, all the awesomeness in Word, you get another program to go through. This is free. Kindle provides it. You can just do a download. So this is Kindle Create. So this is what your eBooks have to go through for Amazon. Um, it's pretty easy. You just do Create New drop your book in there and it does all your hard work for you. 
Um, now some stuff you may have to switch. My biggest thing is my front matter, it doesn't recognize my title page correctly, it doesn't recognize my end pages correctly, and then I tweak a couple of things. Like I want it, you seen how it was like really pretty scroll font for my name and the title. Um, I like that for my name and title for a romance book, so that's what I changed. But you can have it to be science fiction look, you can have it to be very generic. other ones I use, because I told you I get on different things. If you have a MacBook, you can do Apple Books easy. I don't have one, obviously. So Smashwords. Um, okay. Looks a little bit different than Amazon. Obviously, Smashwords has a different way that you do it. So these, it's about the same as the bookshelf at Amazon, but these is what their own, um, and you can see some of them have them published because they are in Kindle Unlimited, um, the Kindle Select program. For these, um, to be dispersed further, because you can just disperse them there, it has to be in the catalog. Um, the reason they're ineligible because they're not published right now. To be in that catalog, you have to make sure that it says Smashwords edition at the front. Why I don't know. They're very picky about that. I'll show you one of my books that has it. And I save it all differently. I got Kindle, Smashwords, Kindle. Okay, so this is, you have to make your title super small, your name super small for them. And then Smashwords Edition. Their catalog, for some odd reason, has to be able to read that. I don't know why. I just do it, and it passes muster for the most part. Um, because they put theirs through a metadata thing. Um, and you can keep submitting it, like if something's wrong. And they will tell you when something's wrong, but you can keep submitting it. that's that catalog and that just means it goes to Apple Books it goes to Nook um, I don't sell too many on this site but you can see here's all the retailers when it goes through that big metadata thing um, it will also do to Amazon but the royalties on here are less but you've got Apple, um, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, which is um, gotten back together now. It was dead, now it's back. Um, Scribe. This website sometimes is not owned, sometimes it is. But the biggest one I do is Apple because I have some friends who have um, iBooks, and the only way they can do it is. And it depends on, you can see some of the dates on when they pay the royalties for these places. That's another reason I don't do too much in there. But that's Smashwords. So that's the other one I use. I used to use Nook. Nook you can do it separately too and get more royalties. Nook is super hard to maneuver and manage and I had a lot of problems. It would take the book off because it's like, oh, it doesn't work today. And 
I need you to relook at it. And, and you do it, and, and then like, oh, it doesn't work today. And I'm like, so I stopped that. <laughs> this does Barnes and Noble, so it does Book. Mm -hmm. So you can find your book on there. Um, and if you have iTunes or iBooks, um, you can look and see if your book's on sale there, and they can leave reviews and stuff. Um, so smash the display, please. So we're gonna look at. Oh, you just on Amazon. Is it? Because I don't care about that one. So this is what it looks like. I, I do purchase my own books. Main reason is so I can see what they look like. Because you never know. Um, but it's got, since this is Kindle Unlimited, there's one the Kindle Unlimited, the hardcover is another option, um, and the paperback. You can do, so there's the price. The print list is always the paperback. I don't know why, but it is always the paperback, so it always has to flash through if you're on the Kindle book. And then hardback. told you about the series. This is where it shows the series of the books and then other books that you may like. And if you really want to go to the series, this is the series. So you can see which ones you've purchased. I don't do my own cover. I let my fantastic artists do it. So this is the website I use. Um, this is the person I use. See, she threw her phone down and it's making noise. <laughs> um, It's on the other, I think it's on my, but that's who I use. So you can scroll through here. You can also find people to edit your book if you can't afford Grammarly, although Grammarly is going to be the cheaper option. Um, but you can have people to edit your book. You can have people to beta read your book. And that just means they're going to read it before anybody else to see if everything flows, if everything sounds good. Um, beta readers don't. Don't do your friends unless they're really good at telling you, hey, this sucks. <laughs> because they're, they're just, it's not a good thing. Um, I have friends that's like, oh, this book is great. Okay. What do you like about it? Oh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's not helpful. I mean, it, it makes you feel good that they liked your book and they read it. But you need somebody who's going to be really honest with you when they're beta reading. And be like, this character does not sound good. It sounds like a wimp. Do you want him to be wimpy? So like, well, he's the hero of the book. Oh, well, he doesn't sound like the hero. Mm -hmm. Or this person's eye color changed. Um, that's a good thing with a beta reader. Be like, well, they have blue eyes in the beginning, and now they have green. Did you mean to do that? Or their hair color changed, or maybe their hair length changed. Or maybe you got something in the timeline wrong. Be like, well, you had them going here on such and such date, and but they're here when they're, you know. Their beta readers are really important. Um, I have a really good beta reader. It's actually a guy who reads my romance books, and he will tell me if stuff works. Um, he actually grammar checks it for me a lot because he's really good with grammar. Um, that's not a main thing for beta readers. Um, you can hire a beta reader too. Like honestly, having a stranger read your book is probably better than your family, and they're not too expensive on here. Um, or if you have a reading group, bring it to the library. Be like, hey, will you read my book? <laughs> You want, a, you want a really good beta reader, though. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to read your genre. Like, it doesn't have to be somebody who reads science fiction or somebody who reads romance. If they like reading books, it's really the only requirement. Um, you can also have somebody to do the formatting of your book. If you just can't wrap your head around how to format the inside of this, you can pay somebody on here to format your book. Um, I try to do everything myself. And honestly, if I was better at InDesign, I'd probably do my own covers, um, but I'm not. I, I get by with it at work, but professional, I want my stuff to look really good because it's in the storefront, too. That's the other thing. It's going up against millions of other books. 
and they said don't judge a book by its cover. Honestly, your cover is really what gets you, especially Kindle. Um, now, paperback and hardback, a little different. Kindle, though, they're going to look the cover. Um, actually, there's a big switch right now in romance books. Everybody who had all the men with the abs, they've changed them all now. They've gone to, like, flowers and trees. Yeah, they changed all their covers. <laughs> so there's new covers coming out. Um, it just depends on the market. I normally don't put people on there, or at least you don't see their whole face, um, just because I want people to envision their own, um, whoever they, they think the character is. Um, so a lot of mine you'll see like out of focus or in the back of them, or sometimes not even a person on them at all. Um, it just depends. Like if you want it to be a really steamy romance book though, but the man's abs on the front got the book sold. Still technically gets the book sold, but um, you know, think of King Arthur. You think of his sword, you know. You got the fantasy, you got the sword, you got, you know, mystical. So keep it within your genre on your book covers. And look at the trends. I don't focus on the trends, but if you want to focus on the trends, book talk on TikTok is really good with that. They will show you. Um, a lot of the fantasy ones are very abstract, like what the Throne of Glass series. Mm -hmm. Think one's got a dude on it, one's got a gate. It's like they're they're all different. Um, I think the court of the thorn and roses is roses and a gate. I don't know. So just stick with your genre on what it is. And your um, cover artist, you can look so you can see. Like I said, this is the one I use. She's got different um, covers on there, and not every cover artist is the same. That's the one thing. See if they can work within your genre. Obviously, she does a lot of uh, fantasy, but she can work well with romance. Um, and if you don't like it, tell them. They'll normally send you a mock-up, and some stuff I tweak on her, some stuff I don't. Tell them. You're paying them. Be like, I just do not like this cover. Sometimes you will get unlimited revisions, um, which is a really good cover artist. They're very confident in their work. Some of them will do. The lowest I think I've seen is two revisions. So that really depends on who you pick. Like I said, there's different packages. Um, hers says starting at five dollars, so you can literally get a Kindle cover for five dollars. Um, any questions? That's a lot. The other one you can do is line editing. That's just an editor. Um, you have three phases of editors, and they will go up in price. Some will not. You've got line editors who will go line by line. They're very expensive. Some people will call themselves line editors and they actually be cheaper. Um, some just call them just editors. You can look at the prices. I do Grammarly for mine and a beta reader. Um, biggest thing is, are you happy? Is it mostly grammatically free? Is that okay? There's always going to be a problem in it. You can pick up a Stephen King novel right now and find at least one error in it. So don't sweat the small errors. Traditionally published books have them too. They will change the name of characters. I've read the book and that character's name changed three times in that book and it's traditionally published. Anyone have any questions or anything? <laughs> Main website is Amazon. That's who's gonna really it looks pretty when it's on there. You do everything 